Well, praise the Lord, somebody. Praise the Lord, somebody. How many of you believe that our Lord Jesus Christ is King? Our Lord Jesus Christ is King. So God, we lift up this service to you this morning. Father God, we submit ourselves to you today. Father God, we declare that no other name than the name of Yeshua, that no other name than the name of Jireh, that no other name than the name of Jesus Christ is worthy, worthy, worthy to be praised. So we will sing to you today without limitations, my God. We come against every uh, shackle that might be holding us today and we break that in the mighty name of Jesus and we declare Holy Spirit have your way do what you need to do God we are your vessels we are here to give you our best worship so together we declare we declare that you alone are holy that you alone are worthy that you alone deserve the highest praise receive our worship today receive our praise today in the mighty name of jesus christ we pray amen and amen and amen amen
Everything has to change. Everything has to change when I call on that name. Everything has to change when I call on that name. Everything has to change when I call on that name. Depression has to flee when I call on that name. Sickness has to flee when I call on that name. Victory, what for me when I call on that name? Healing is what for me. Trauma, you gotta flee. Yeah, trauma, you gotta flee. to the people in this congregation in the mighty name of Jesus and the people watching online in the name of Jesus. We thank you, oh God. We thank you. I was a wretch. I remember who I was. I was lost. I was blind. I was running out of time. Sin Separated, the breach was far too wide. But from the far side of the chasm, you held me in your side. So you made a way across the great divide, left behind heaven's throne to build it here inside. the debt I owe, broke my chains, freed my soul, for the first time I had home. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood applied. Thank you, Jesus, it has won. my place, laid inside my tomb of sin. You were buried for three days, but 
stronghold must be broken. You gotta sing that like you believe that. Even when you can't see it, you declare over yourself that whatever was holding me bound, I'm gonna sing it today and I'm gonna believe that it shall be broken. That it shall be broken. That it shall be broken. We speak deliverance in this place. We speak healing in this place. And we come together in agreement that whatever is holding anybody bound, we come together in agreement and we cancel and we nullify it right now in the mighty name of Jesus. No weapon formed against us will prosper. We are children of the Most High. We are children of the Most High. We are children of the Most High. So when we sing every high thing,
while we transition into the next part of this service. Life can bring us storms. Those moments where we wander, wonder, doubt 
The journey doesn't stop, but the progress does. It can be lonely, painful. Sometimes we try to stare it down, as if we could somehow will it to go away. Or we think we can go toe to toe and come out the other side, unscathed. We often forget just how small we are. The truth is, storms are inevitable. But when they appear, we have a protector. A savior who knows a thing or two about calming storms. A God who is a stronghold in times of trouble. In our weakness, He is strong. In our fear, He is courage. In our desperation, He is peace. Yes, storms are inevitable. But our God is invincible. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Good morning, everyone. It's nice to see everybody in the house of the Lord today. It's truly a pleasure. I love Sundays because I just love being in the house with you guys, worshiping, getting good food from the Lord. So just hello. Good morning. <laughs> Happy to see everybody. Uh, my name is Alana Townsend. I am a leader on our Team 7, which are, is our Connect Group ministry. Um, I do a variety of other things. I teach to the kids on Sundays. I'm in the young adults uh, ministry, so I'm, I'm serving a little bit everywhere. I love to serve. Uh, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure really to, uh, to serve and to give of myself. So good morning. Good morning. Welcome, everyone. Um, if it's your first time in the house this morning, we have a custom here that we love to do. We love to uh, recognize, acknowledge our first-time guests. So if there's any first-time guests in the house this morning, uh, if you could just wave your hand, if you'd like to stand, you can do that. We appreciate you for coming. There are many, many churches in Montreal, but you chose uh, this house of worship today. So we thank you for choosing RC as your place of worship this morning. So if there's anyone um, in the house, let's all just um, welcome them, if there are any. Uh, for those online, we thank you for being online with us today. Um, Thank you for choosing to watch, to tune in. We know that you could have been doing many other things. So thank you for tuning in. If you were blessed uh, by our worship, can we give a hand uh, to our youth team this morning and thank God for them. We love our youth. Uh, what a blessing they are to have, uh, to have among us. So we thank you. Thank you, uh, youth team, for, uh, for your wonderful worship this morning. Uh, so yes, back to our first time guests online. If, if you're new, if you're watching online for the first time, just put it in the chat that you're new. Uh, and we will make sure to connect with you. For those in the house, if you did not receive a guest card by one of our wonderful ushers this morning, uh, if you can raise your hand and they will gladly pass one out. On the guest card, what we do is we ask for your information. We ask that you fill that out. Uh, there's a section for prayer requests that you can um, fill out so that we can come into agreement with you for your prayer requests, for your needs. We are a praying church, and we uh, we want to come in agreement with you for your needs this morning, so fill that out. Uh, there are many, many, many announcements to give this morning. We have a lot of things going on in the next few uh, weeks, so I will start. Uh, the first announcement that we have is this Friday, March 29th, is our Good Friday service at 7.30. Yes, 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 looking forward to that. It's always a great time in the presence of the Lord, so please, uh, please make it... Um, your, your, your duty to come out and, uh, and hear from God and worship with us on Good Friday, March 29th at 7.30. Uh, the next week we have um, Baptism Sunday on April 7th. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, so for those who are looking to get baptized or rebaptized, we ask that you would um, visit our website at www.resurrectioncenter.com slash baptism. There's also um, a form in the back where you can sign up manually on, uh, in Guest Central. So if you are looking to be baptized, if you want to get rebaptized, we encourage you to do so. Next, we have um, the new members course coming up on 
April 13th, which is a Saturday at noon. Uh, so for anybody in the house or if you know anybody who wants to become a member, um, there's a new members course happening. Light refreshments will be served. And the following day, the 14th, we will be uh, receiving those new members. So if you're looking to become a member, please, please uh, go to www.resurrectioncenter.com slash new. There's also a form where you can register for that at Guest Central. Next, we have our First Fruits uh, Sunday, which is coming up on um, April 14th, where we give our, um, our First Fruits Probably Bishop is going to preach on that. I'm assuming that Sunday, so you'll get, or before that, you'll get a bit of a more understanding. But what it is is that we give um, typically one week's salary back to the Lord as a as a way to show that we are putting God first. So please, uh, I encourage you to get involved with that. There will be a dinner after the service, so if you want to attend that, you can register at, again, www.resurrectioncenter.com slash firstfruits um, to reserve your spot for the dinner. It's always a great time where we get to fellowship and just gather together and uh, enjoy each other's company, okay? Uh, next, we have, it's time for tithes and offering. So can we give it, yes, tithes and offering, a great part of our, of our service. Um, you know, we are doing in our ladies' Bible study uh, this time around, we are learning about how to navigate God's finances his way. Um, and there's quite a few nuggets in there, a lot of information um, that maybe is a reminder or something new, just a, a, new, a, new, a new thought process, something new that we're learning. Um, and, you know, God gives us, whatever we have, it's, it's God that gives it to us to steward that thing, right? Whether it's our finances, our family, uh, whatever it is that, that we have, that we think we own, truly God owns and he gives it to us to manage, right? So when I think about tithes and offering, I just think that it's a great way uh, to show to God that, you know, I can steward your money well because it is really his money that he, he gives to us on loan. So I'm encouraging you to think about the way that you steward God's money and think about the way that you are managing God's money. And obviously we know that we, we give our tithes as a way to not only um, bless this church and enhance uh, enhance the church and also build the kingdom, but to really just show God that you know what I'm giving you, I'm giving you what I have. I'm giving it back to you. So um, there are many ways to give. We can give by uh, going online to the Resurrection Center dot com slash give. You can text seven nine seven seven to uh, to RC Give. There is a terminal in the back if you have cards. Also, we have uh, the old-fashioned way, which is the buckets on either end of the, um, the aisles that the ushers will pass towards the front. So if you have your envelope, um, you can do that as well. And while we do that, I'll just ask if you can stand so that we can bless the offering. And um, yeah, and give God thanks for that. So Heavenly Father, in your name, Jesus, I pray that you would, um, you know, just allow us to steward your money well, God. Give us the wisdom, give us the knowledge on how to steward your money, how to um, give back to the community, give back to the church, God. I pray that uh, everybody who has an envelope or if they're giving online, whatever it is, God, that you would bless them, that you would encourage them to give, that you would um, empower them to give as well, God, that you would show them um, show them the way, show them how to, how to be able to give cheerfully because we know that you love a cheerful giver, God. So I pray that as we are giving our tithes and offering this morning that you would bless those that have to give, bless those that are willing to give but may not have in this situation, God, that you would open up a door for them to be able to do so. I pray that you would just bless every single person in this congregation today and those watching online. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Have a great service. God bless you all and uh, see you next time. Thank you. I have drifted away. I was distracted and lost sight of the shore. The waves keep growing larger. I thought I could navigate this myself. Without you, I have grown tired and weary. I must realign my compass toward Christ once more. The pages of scripture become my map, leading me through the tumultuous waters with dedicated time spent with God, I feel the waters start to recede. I remind myself who my God is. He calls himself 
the mighty God, the Creator, Father, the God Most High, Prince of Peace, the beginning and the end. Lord, I repent of my sin and selfish ways. Just as a ship needs a captain, my life requires the guidance of a savior. Christ is the anchor that holds me firm, preventing me from drifting aimlessly. It's through him that I'm guided back to safety. And no matter how many times I drift away, I know God is calling me home. Praise the Lord. Can somebody praise the Lord? Amen, 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 amen. We have, um, we have a couple that recently reunited here in Canada. Um, I'm going to ask them to come on down. Uh, Pastor Caddy, uh, Caddy, Caddy, I believe it is, and his wife. Are you guys in the building? No? Oh, you're all right. No problem, no problem. Thank you. Amen. We bless them in the name of Jesus anyway. His wife was there in Canada for four years, and, um, and he's recently made his way to Canada, so they just wanted us to pray over them. So we bless them in the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Can you just stand with me just for a moment? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Can someone just, you can say that, you know, it's okay to say, to thank him. Just say it, just say it, say it out loud. Just say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you today, Father. Yeah, that's right. Take your time. Let's welcome the Spirit of God. He's been here all day. Jesus. Now, Holy Spirit, we welcome you here. We ask that you would do what only you alone can do. And we're trusting you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Are you getting impatient? Thank you, Jesus. Maybe people watching online, if you're New to church, you might be wondering what I'm waiting for. I'm not waiting for anyone or anything. I just love being in the presence of God. And I want you to know this morning that you are in his presence. And things change. Things change in his presence. And I say to the Lord, to the Holy Spirit today, Lord, lift us up. Lift me up, God, and plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land. A higher plane that I have found. Lord, plant my feet on high your ground. That's my desire this morning. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land. No higher ground that I have found. 
Lord, plant my feet on high your ground. I know that's really old. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land. A higher plane that I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Does anybody remember the first course? I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. My on high, I forgot the words. Ground. Lord, Lord, lift me up, lift me up. <laughs> and let, let me, me stand. stand. Thank you, babe. By faith on heaven's table land. No higher place that I have found. Lord, plant. Church, church, listen, listen, listen. That, that, I don't know about you, but that's my desire. That's my prayer. I'm singing my prayer this morning. Lord, lift me up and let me by faith on heaven's table land. No higher place. That I have found, Lord, plant my feet. feet. We're doing it one more time. If you don't know it now, you should know the words. It's simple. Lord, lift me up and let me stand. Somebody needs to stand this morning. Faith on heaven's table. You're sounding real good. And I have found, Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Can we risk it? Can we risk it? I want to live above the world. Though Satan's darts at me are earl. For faith has caught a joyful sound, the song of saints on higher. Come on, lift it right from the belly, sing it. By prophetic word today, by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Yes, yes. A higher place than I have found. Yes, Lord. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. I heard the Holy Spirit. I heard the Holy Spirit say, the secret to revival, the secret to, to the next level anointing, it requires several key ingredients. And the first ingredient is an ingredient called hunger. Family, God is looking for a generation of hungry, thirsty people with a deep-seated desire to experience thy kingdom come. And I believe with all my heart that God's looking for a remnant of people who are more hungry for his presence 
than they are for fame or fortune. Psalms 42 and verse 2 expresses the desire of the psalmist when he says, as the deer pants after the water brooks, so my soul longs for thee. Family, I don't know about you this morning, but all week long I've been longing. My soul has been panting. Now you don't need to believe me, it's fine. You won't offend me by, by not believing me and you can call me old fashioned and outdated. But you can't forget that every experience, every, every person that experience, wants to experience next level power and anointing. They must have an insatiable hunger and thirst for the person called the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. He is a person. He's not a thing. He's not a bird. He is a person. And Acts chapter 1 and verse 8 tells us that after we receive the power of the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit. There is power in receiving the Holy Spirit. Now family, hear me real good before you take your seats. We must become the generation that seeks not just the power, but we must seek the person. Do you hear me today? You cannot receive the power of God while ignoring the person of God. The secret to experiencing all that God has given to us or wants to give to us is in the person of the Holy Ghost. Do you remember that after Jesus' resurrection, he appears to at least 500 people, but yet... The instruction from Jesus after the resurrection was, go and tarry and wait to be endued with power that was promised to every person. See, watch this church. I'm teaching here just for a moment. According to history, 380 people missed the birthing of the New Testament church. They missed being there in, the, in person on the day of Pentecost. And probably these 380 people missed it. Because much like us, we were far too busy. Because after all these 380 people that could have been in the upper room but couldn't wait. They were taking care of business. They probably had families to look after. Things to do, places to go, and people to see. And after all, church, why would anyone want to wait in a tiny room? I've been there. It's not a very big room. The room that they say was the upper room is a very tiny room. I can't even imagine how 120 people waited in that room. So maybe they didn't want to wait for that long because it was inconvenient. Can you imagine being in the room waiting for day after day? Some historians say that they could have waited up to 10 days. But we can't wait 10 minutes. I want you to get this church next level anointing will require you, your willingness to do something that you have never done before. Wanting a next level anointing without having a relationship with the source of that anointing is a grave mistake. We must be willing to wait. 
And I want you to hear this. And if you can, I want you to write it down or tuck it in your spirit so you don't forget this. There is always a next level with God regardless of the level where you are operating currently. Some of you are baptized, filled with the Holy Ghost. Over the last few weeks, so many of our youth were baptized with the evidence and with the speaking in tongues. And I want you to hear me, young people, there is still more. Whatever you've experienced in your relationship with Christ, there is still more. And I prophesy to you today that something big is coming. No, no, I understand some of you don't get excited over that because your faith is not there. But let me tell you something, something big is coming. And I heard the Lord say that it's not even about if something as big is coming. It's about if you're willing to be hungry. Are you hungry enough to do whatever it takes to be in the right place at the right time to receive what's coming? Anything that comes from God is big. The Bible says if you are willing and obedient you will eat the good of the land it's not good enough to be willing most people are willing but we're not obedient you've got to be willing and obedient I know you're waiting to sit down but can we pray I'm not wasting time God knows I'm not wasting I'm not trying to waste your time now heavenly father in the beauty of your holiness and on all of the majesty of your glory I come before you today with an open heart Desiring nothing more than for your Holy Spirit to take total and complete control of my life and the lives of the people that's in this building and watching online. Holy Spirit, like a mighty wind that blew on the day of Pentecost, fill all that were there in that house. We ask today that you would blow across the width the breath and the length of our entire being today, sweeping away every chaff of selfishness and of sin that impedes your divine spirit from flowing in us and through us in the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus, as you promised in John 14, sin the comforter. Oh God, this is known as Palm Sunday. This is the week of passion that we're about to enter into. It's the week, Father, leading up to your son dying on the cross for all of humanity. I ask today in the name of Jesus Christ that you will send that that spirit, that anointing that had to invade Jesus to carry him to the cross. I ask in the name of Jesus that you will allow that spirit, the Holy Spirit, to rest in this house. I ask you to reveal to us the mysteries of the deep hidden things of your kingdom. Holy Ghost, there's some things that are hidden that needs to be revealed. And I ask in the name of Jesus that you would reveal it. Help us to walk in purpose, on purpose, with purpose. Empower us today, Father, for a life that glorifies your name in word and in thought and in actions in Jesus' name. 
Holy Spirit, we invite you to flood our hearts today like never before. Take the throne of my heart on the hearts of our people. Be our guide, be our counselor, be our ever-present help in time of need. Holy Spirit, Suramande, Libusukutaramande. May your fruit blossom in our lives. Displaying love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. May every person that encounters us, God, may they see the fruit of your spirit. Holy Ghost, set us like a great light upon the hill that gives light to the whole city in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit of God, in our moments of weakness, be our strength. When confusion clouds our way, be our clarity. In times of sorrow, be our comfort and our joy. Illuminate our paths with your light. Guide us through the darkness and lead us into the abundant life according to John 10.10. 10. And Holy Ghost, in moments where we've got to make decisions, we invite you to be part of our decision-making. Lead us and guide us. Grant us wisdom that comes from the throne room of God. Lord, we invite you, we invoke your presence today. Transform us from glory to glory, and may everything that we do and accomplish bring glory to the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, walk up and down these aisles, in between these chairs. Lord, I send you and ask that you would visit Somebody that is thousands of miles away that's watching online. Invade their office, invade their home, invade their car, invade their back porch, wherever they're watching from. Father, let the anointing that's resident in this house visit somebody right now. Heal them, set them free in the mighty name of Jesus. We surrender today. Come on, church. Would you just take a moment before I begin to preach and just surrender? Just surrender. Holy Spirit, may our lamp of oil never run low in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I ask that you will give us oil that we can share with other people. And Lord, may they catch fire. I said, may they catch fire. And may they catch fire in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Light us on fire. Light us on fire, Father, with the power of the Holy Spirit. As you did for the 120 in the upper room, light us, set us ablaze. Lord, let the light of the Holy Spirit shine through Lachine, shine through Montreal, through Quebec, through Canada, and around the world in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Can you just say, I receive? I receive. All right, while you're taking your seats, just shout, next level. In fact, five, at least three people, high five, high five, three people, and tell them, next level, next level. Next level. Whew. You don't want to miss next Friday night, guys. Whatever you got to do to be in the house next Friday night at 7.30. What time? 7.30. 7.30. 7.30. Friday night. We're doing a combined community service. There's three or four churches that's going to be joining us. So please, please, please do your very best to be here. 
Don't embarrass us and let a, a small church have more people than we do. Amen? Next level. I cannot leave the text that I started in this sermon series more than three weeks ago now. And the text that I started with is found in Proverbs 14, verses 12 to 14, and it says, I'm going to read really quickly. It says, before every man there lies a wide and pleasant road that seems right, but ends in death. Laughter cannot mask a heavy heart. When the laughter ends, the grief remains. And verse 14, the backslider gets bored with himself. The godly man's life is, well, let me try that again because you didn't sound very excited. The godly man's life is, the godly man's life is exciting does not mean it's exciting because we don't have any problems. Family, the sermon title we've been using for this sermon is charting the course to the next level. And uh, here's what I've discovered. There is a certain course that every person must take if your desire is to get to a specific location, you've got to be specific about how you're traveling. If I were to leave Montreal like we did last Monday, to travel to Toronto. I can't go to the 20 just, just down the street here. I've, it runs Highway 20 for you that's watching online. I can't go to Highway 20 and go Highway 20 East expecting to go to Toronto, right? Now, if I, if I wanted, my destination was to go to Toronto, but I went, should we stop and wait for the phone or you want me to stop and wait? No, okay, you, you don't want me to embarrass the person, no problem. You can't, if you're going to Toronto, for you that don't know Toronto, you, from, from here you got to go west. But if you go east, you're, going to, you're never going to reach. If I drove for hours and hours and hours going east... I would never reach Toronto, correct? Now, why is that? The reason, church, is because you can never reach your desired location going the wrong way. Now, it doesn't matter if you have good intentions. It doesn't matter if you pray. Uh-oh. It doesn't matter if you gave your tithe. It doesn't matter who's your friend. It doesn't even matter if you attend RC or somebody else, if you're somewhere else. If you're going, if your intentions is to go west and you go east, church, you're never going to reach Toronto. I heard the Holy Spirit say this. You've been going the wrong way. And I also heard this. This is the words of Jesus to Paul on the road to Damascus. He said, Jesus said to Paul, it is hard to kick against the goads. Arise and go into the city and you shall be told thee what you should do. So this morning, if you don't know what to do, and you got up to come to the resurrection center, I want you to hear me the, that God sent me here through the power of the Holy Spirit to advise you that you're going the wrong way. Let me remind some and inform others. As a believer, spiritually speaking, it is impossible to obtain next level in any area that we desire while remaining in a backslidden condition. 
In other words, why going the wrong direction. Do you remember I told you this before, what a backslider is? It's someone who is going the wrong way spiritually. Church, I grew up in church. I've been a Christian most of my life. And I will admit and I will tell you there's been plenty of times in my life when I was backsliding. Because if I am not growing towards Christ, I'm moving away from Christ. I told you this before, there is no neutral in the kingdom of God. Now listen to this. Jesus said this in the book of Revelation chapter 2. Don't get scared. Revelation chapter 2, verses 1 and 7. And he's speaking to one of the seven churches called Ephesus, and he has this severe railing word for this church. Look what he says. He says this. Write this letter to the angel of the church. The angel of the church was meant, and that, that's another word for pastor. So write this letter to the pastor of the church in Ephesus. This is the message from the one who holds the seven stars in his right hand, the one who walks among the seven golden lampstands. That's Jesus, by the way. Verse 2, I know all the things you do. Jesus is talking to who? The church at Ephesus. He says, I have seen your hard work. Congratulations. I have seen your hard work and your patience endured. I know that you don't tolerate evil people. You've examined the claims of those who say they are apostles but are not. You have discovered that they are liars. You have patiently suffered for me without quitting. But verse 4 says, man, sometimes that word, but, he says, remember, this is Jesus speaking to his church. He says, but I have this complaint against you. You don't love me. You don't love me or each other as you did at first. Family, I could say that the definition, according to this, of a backslider is someone whose love for Jesus is waning. And I heard this in my spirit. If your love for Jesus is not gaining, then your love for Jesus is waning. When it comes to the love that you have for Christ, there should be only one way, one direction, and that should be up. A backslider is a fellow or a person who has gone astray. Someone who was walking, at one time was walking with God, but has lost their way. Now, Jesus, speaking of the backsliding church, in verse 5, goes on to say this. He says, look how far you have fallen. Turn back to me. Now, family, I know the Resurrection Center, for the most part, is a prophetic people. And you love prophetic words. Anybody love prophetic words? Come on, don't lie. We love, we love, if, if we didn't love prophetic words, the, the, we wouldn't attract that kind of anointing. We love, there's nothing wrong with that. We are an apostolic, prophetic people. We release the apostolic, we release, we release the prophetic in our midst and in our lives in the name of Jesus. So if we love it, let me give you a prophetic word. Look how far. You have fallen. Turn back to me. Now, if I said 16 people is going to get their house paid off this week. (laughs) It wouldn't even matter if you're prophetic or not. Every person that's got a huge mortgage beyond their feet. Saying, let me be one of the 16. And all that would do, and you know what? Let me tell you this. I'll just drop this on you. Sometimes when a prophetic word is released, even if you're not believing for it, you can grab it and apply it. You activate the prophetic word by receiving it by faith. 
So if I said that, you'd be on your feet, yes. And you'd be taking it, even if you didn't believe it, you'd say, yes, Lord, let, let, let me win the lottery in the name of Jesus. But it's very typical, I'm not scolding, it's very typical of a church, of Christians in the modern day age, that when they hear the word like this, look how far you've fallen and turn back to me, that we are, we, <laughs> what we hear is crickets. Because a backslidden church don't even realize they backslid. Then Jesus says this, and do the works you did at first. Then he says this, if you don't, hey, hey, Jesus, don't worry, it's going to get better. If you don't repent, if you don't repent, Resurrection Center, if you don't repent, elders, deacons, bishops, apostles, prophets, if you don't repent, I will come and remove your lampstand from its place among the churches. Now listen to me carefully, Resurrection Center. It matters not how much talent we have. It does not matter about the greatness of our works. Works and talents can never replace having Jesus at the center of your life. In fact, I decree and declare by the word of God through the prophetic anointing that rests upon this house that Ichabod would never be written above our doors in the name of Jesus. Hey, the word Ichabod actually means inglorious. It means there is no glory. But this will not be my story. No, 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 no. Come on, so, somebody needs to help your pastor push. I said, this will not be my story. This church, this will not be the manifestation of this ministry in the mighty name of Jesus. We will not settle for an Ichabod experience in the name of Jesus. In fact, let me say it like this. I rebuke the spirit of Ichabod that's trying to invade this ministry in the name of Jesus. We want an authentic, real move of the Spirit of God like we have never experienced before. And when the real, authentic Spirit of God begins to move in our midst, the first sign is repentance. If the church wants the world to know Jesus, judgment must first begin according to the word of God in the house of God. Brother Glenn, he's talking about you and I. Judgment, that means we need to repent of everything that looks like self, everything that looks like sin. We've got to get to a place where we deal with ourselves so the glory of God can manifest. Mm. I feel a little out of place with my suit on with all these young people with jeans on hey you take it if you want it but you don't have to take it but I'll take it for me I decree and declare I will not ascend into heaven and I will not exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also not sit on the mount of the congregation on the furthest side of the north. 
I will not ascend like Satan trying to steal his glory. Let me just tell you from the heart of your pastor and your first lady and the elders, this cat right here, I'm telling you, church, is not interested in fame or in fortune. I want to experience uh, the real, true move of God. I'm not... Prophet, uh, Pastor Brown prophesied some time ago, and she said that God sent Pastor Burton to raise up an army. Let me tell you something about that army. That army, it cannot be selfish. We cannot be self-centered. We can't try to be looking for fame. We can't try to be saying that I'm the best. Let me tell you something, church. I crush all of that pride in the name of Jesus. I'm not trying to be better than anybody else, but I I am through the grace of God trying to become everything that he has ordained me to become in the name of Jesus and I'm telling you church with him greatness is possible I break intimidation I decree and declare that not one of these that God has given us through the power of the Holy Spirit will backslide in the name of Jesus. The church needs to rebuke the spirit of backsliding. We will not be rocked to sleep in the cradle of the demonic realm in the name of Jesus. We will not settle for boring church. Mm -hmm. Do you hear me? I said we will not settle for boring church. We will not settle for a bunch of bump on the logs sitting around looking at their watch waiting for the preacher to shut up. Give me a church. Give me an army of people who's saying I'm hungry for a mighty move of the spirit. Give me some people who know how to pray. Give me some people who know how to fast. Give me some people who know how to treat people right. I'm telling you church, God wants to send a revival but the church needs to repent. Look at your neighbor and say, I guess we better repent. We are not going to settle for a prayerless church. By the way, our monthly prayer meeting, I mean, we have weekly prayer meetings, but our monthly prayer meeting, first Friday of every month, from 9 to 12, we're going to be waiting on God. When? First Friday of every month. The Bible says in Psalms 122, verse 1, he said this, I was glad. I was, I was glad. Some of you, your version is, I was sad when they said unto me, it's time to go to church. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go where? Into the, hey, I just heard a revelation. I heard say, Dave, the right reason why people are sad rather than glad is because they're not going to the house of God. Because let me tell you something, you can get what you get in here without the presence of God at the bell center. What makes us different than any other establishment where people are gathered? We gather in the name of one and only Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. We don't come to lift up man or to exalt man or to see who is wearing what. We've come for one reason and one reason only on a Sunday afternoon, and that is to lift up the name of Jesus. Let me tell you some church, I didn't come to even preach. I come to lift up the name of Jesus. The church that begins to lift up the name of Jesus will not have enough space to accommodate the people because people don't want to come to a place unless it is the place of the house of God. Verse 6. 
But this is in your favor. You hate the evil deeds of the Nicolaitans, just as I do. Now he says, anyone who hears, with ears to hear, must listen to the Spirit. Understand what he's saying to the church. To everyone who is victorious, I will give fruit from the tree of life in the paradise of God. And watch this to the church of Laodicea. In Revelation 3, verse 15, Jesus says this. I know all things you do. Hey, let me rephrase that. To the church called the Resurrection Center. In Revelation 3, 15, I know all the things you do. That you are neither hot nor cold. I wish you were one or the other. But watch this. I come under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I said, I'd rather for you to be hot or cold, but don't stay in this lukewarm position. Church, today is the day that we make a decision to be all in with Christ or all the way out. No longer one foot in, one foot out. I know we like the song, but no more dancing all about. We've got to make a decision today to go all in with Jesus. Let me give you Dave's interpretation of that verse. It says this. God desires and requires a passionate devotion from all who call him Lord and spiritual complacency is totally and completely unacceptable to him. Now, it's been three weeks. I've been trying to give you a list of symptoms. I've been trying to give you a diagnosis to diagnose the virus called backslider. And I've only given you the first one in three weeks. And next week it's rise. Someone needs to pray. The first symptom that I gave you was spiritual pride. I dealt with that already. You can go back and rewatch that spiritual pride. But number two, number two, you might have a virus called backslider if you find a decline in your prayer life. Family, prayer is to your spirit what oxygen is to your body. Without it, you would die. A prayerless church is a powerless church. I don't care how you slice it and dice it. To be a Christian without prayer is no more possible than to be alive without breathing. One of the first indications that a person is on the verge of a full-blown backsliding condition is a decline, or the second is a decline in your prayer life. Listen, and he's doing this. The enemy will even help you succeed in life and give you great wealth and influence if it means that you're going to let your prayer life decline. A decline or an elimination of your prayer life is a sure sign that you've been infected by a backslider's virus. In fact, church, let me say this, let me say this. It is impossible to have a healthy prayer life and to backslide. God is the lifter of mankind, but he lifts no one except someone is praying. Talent cannot replace the benefit of prayer. Favor, oh, and we love favor, but favor cannot replace the benefit of prayer. Money cannot replace the benefit of prayer. Without a concentrated, fervent, dedicated prayer life, you will never rise to the next level. 
The reason why some of us have not been lifted in this church is because we have not made the connection between the lifting and the prayer life. You can get more education. And education is good and it can lift you, but it can't sustain you. Prayer is the only thing that can lift a man out of sin. You know, we, we, many people around the world was sad this week because our, the princess in England was diagnosed with cancer and it was reported. And I said to my wife, I said, babe, that's proof that you can have all the money in the world and you can have all the fame in the world. But it doesn't mean that you're protected. It doesn't mean that you can't get sick. Let me tell you something, church. There is only one that can protect a man or or a woman from sickness, and his name is Jesus. Let me tell you, man can lift you. Oh, yes, man can lift you and put you in some amazing places, but only God can keep you there. God can give you a house, but he can't, but only, I mean, some man can give you a house, but only God can give you a home. Oh, I had, I had a, a nice ribeye steak last night. My money bought me the ribeye steak. My appetite came from God. Because only God can give a man appetite. You can have the money to buy the steak, but I'm telling you, without his breath, without his blessing, without his favor, some of you are being increased and you're being lifted, but do not forget who did the lifting. Oh, because it's so easy. It's so easy that now when things look so good, let me tell you, the greatest, the greatest The greatest thing to keep a man praying is trouble. (laughs) Without being intentional, I'm telling you, church. For many years after we got this building, prayer went down in this church. The prayer level. No, No disrespect to the intercessors, but it went down. It went down in my own life, not just because now I didn't need to pray. Now I had to get busy. Now I had to get busy fixing the thing that God gave me. Do you think that God will give us something with the intention that we get so busy that we forget to take time to to bless the one and spend time? Hey, Pastor Faggins, you're sitting in a good spot. Pastor Terry spot. Let me look across at your wife. Do you think, do you think for a moment that God gave you such an incredible spouse so that you could forget him? Let me tell you something, family. Anything that takes the place of God, I don't care what it is. Anything that takes you away from your place and your intimacy with God, I'm telling you that thing becomes an idol and God is going to be against it. Prayer. Someone say prayer. Prayer. Look at your neighbor and say "Pray." pray. I pray, you pray, we all pray. Prayer. Someone said, uh, someone asked this question, when should I pray? And the Holy Ghost answered, men ought always to pray without ceasing. Someone asked, how should we pray? The Holy Ghost answered through Jesus and said, Father who is in heaven, uphold thy holy name. Bring your kingdom so that your will is done on earth as it is where? In heaven. Family, can I exhort you? When things are good, pray. When things are bad, pray. When you're healthy, pray. When you're sick, 
pray. When you're broke, pray. When there's money in the bank, pray. And in fact, I'll say it this way. The higher the blessing, the more you should pray. Because let me tell you something. The, the enemy is not concerned with somebody that's broke. Stop getting blessed. The more, and it's amazing that the blessing keeps us out of prayer. But the more you're blessed, the more you need to pray. Because the more you're blessed, the higher you become on the radar of the enemy. If you need to shonda Rhonda to get somewhere, let me tell you something. You need to do a whole lot more to stay there. It's one thing. Brother Millington, for a pastor to arise... It's one thing to have a ministry. It's another thing to keep it. Do you hear me? Yes, same with your wife or your spouse. It's one thing to get her. Hey. Hey. Don't mess with me. It's one thing to get her. I worked hard for mine. I've been working 33 years to keep her. Do you hear me? 30, let me tell you something. Let me, 33 years. I believe it was just this week. We, we, I don't know where we're going. If I remember it was this week because she tells me this often. She said, I'm so glad I'm yours. And I'm like, I'm glad you said yes. Let me tell you something, family. Oh, she got the better deal. (laughs) Some of you didn't get it. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I learned that from my friend, Pastor Yvonne Stabile. I got the better deal. Some of you don't know it yet, but you got the better deal too. You make sure you tell Carolyn that. I said, when things are good, pray. When things are bad, pray. When you're sick, pray. Pray when, pray without ceasing, all the time, pray. When you come to church, pray. When you leave church, pray. If you're homesick, pray, pray, pray. Do you know, I never planned to tell you this. Some of you would know that our granddaughter was with us last week. And when she's with us, we have this deal that we would drive halfway. And then uh, that means... Kingston or just after Kingston, Ontario, my daughter drives halfway. Uh, now I'm telling you this story. I got to tell you something that some of you are not going to be too happy about. Uh, but I got in the car. We loaded everybody in the car. And it is not my custom. This is the part that you're not happy, going to be happy about. It is not my custom that before I move that I pray. It's very rare. I do that when you guys are with me because I know you're with me and you like that. And it's good. It's good. So, so I do it. But when it's me and my wife, I went somewhere with Pastor Brown and she started to pray. And she's saying, Lord, take the wheel. I'm like, you want Jesus to drive or me? <laughs> because right now I'm driving. But anyway, I, it's not my custom. You're not mad at me, but you know, remember my preaching on backsliding, right? It's not my custom that every time I move the car that I pray. It's very rare that I do that. I sat in the car, ladies and gentlemen, not lying and not exaggerating. I wasn't feeling the anointing. I wasn't speaking in tongues. I never felt nothing. But out of my spirit, I started the car and I start praying. Didn't feel nothing. Even to now, don't feel anything like from that prayer. 
And I started to pray. And my wife, because my granddaughter wanted my wife to sit in the back, they can feel like they're special. I'm the chauffeur. <laughs> so I, I started to pray and I said something like this, but I didn't feel anything. Did you hear that part? I'm trying to make a, I'm trying to make a point. You got it. Thank you. I said, Lord Jesus, protect us today as we drive. And I said, Lord, protect destiny. Not my custom church. But out of my spirit man. My spirit man knew something. The Holy Ghost knew something. That this cat didn't know. I didn't drive, well, maybe 18th Avenue is right there, 19th Avenue is right there if you're on, on um, St. Antoine. It's basically a block. I went that distance, and the phone rang. My wife answered, said, oh, it's Destiny. Hey, babe. And she was screaming, screaming. She said, a big truck just ran me over. Now watch this, church. I prayed. I didn't feel anything. But I prayed. While I was praying, at the exact moment, if you trade, I mean, literally, church, it couldn't be more than 30 to 60 seconds. She calls. And her mom says, are you okay? Yes. She, this 18-wheeler, fully loaded, she's in this little matchbox of a car called a Ford Focus or something. And the guy doesn't see her. Pulls over in the truck, spins her around, comes back and crashes into her a second time. A second time. Now, my, my granddaughter, she says, I guess it's a good thing we pray. <laughs> now, wait. Ah, uh, children. Children. In my mind, you want me to tell you what was in my mind? My mind. I thought, that prayer didn't work. Did, did, did you hear that? Only, only for a minute. Don't crucify me, okay? Good Friday is Friday. But my first, my first instinct was, I'm letting you in on my secret thoughts. That's not fair. You don't share yours with me. My first instinct was, oh, that prayer didn't work. And then I heard the Lord say, you don't know what I saved her from. And my little on-church daughter, by the way, a uh, granddaughter, hey, every time she comes to this house, she goes back on fire. My, my, oh, I don't mean to preach about my own family, I'm sorry. My wife brought her to see my daughter. And one of my daughter's friends was there. And she walked over to, daughter, to, to the, my daughter's friend, Summer's friend, and said, um, what's that on your neck? She had a cross. She said, oh, you believe in God. And the young lady was taken back. Like, hey, I don't know if I feel comfortable saying what I believe or don't believe. And she said, if you don't believe in God, you shouldn't wear that cross. <laughs> Did you hear me, church? That will preach. If you don't believe in God, you shouldn't wear that cross. Because backslidden people will wear the cross. 
but not believe in the God who died on the cross. Mm. First Thessalonians 5 and verse 17. Read it with me. It's on the screen. Always keep on praying. Always. Aren't you glad that it didn't say when you feel like it? <laughs> Prayer is not just a request line. It is our lifeline to God's power and God's presence. Prayer is not supposed to be our last resort. It's supposed to be our first response. Listen. A next level anointing is the fruit of a vibrant, healthy prayer life. And without a fervent communion with God in prayer, your oil reservoir of divine empowerment will forever remain untapped. Some of you want to go to the next level in 2024. You're not going to the next level without prayer. Luke 18, verse 1, he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and what? Nudge your neighbor and say, wake up. Wake up. Anybody know what this here is? Does anybody know what this is? It's a phone. <laughs> anybody know what this right here is? Char Thank you, brothers. It's a charging port. When my battery on my phone goes to red, my whole body starts to twitch. You would think I was demon-possessed. <laughs> Don't laugh, Pastor. You know, you're just as bad. He, he's laughing so hard because he knows, he knows I'm preaching his story. Let me, let me just illustrate this for a moment. Do you know almost every time I travel, I got to go purchase a charger? Do you know we are so intentional about charging our phone today, people get divorced over fighting about chargers in their home. <laughs> the last cruise we went on, my wife is like, you're not using my charger. <laughs> Bring your own charger. <laughs> anybody, else, anybody else ever have fight over chargers? Yeah. I bet you, I bet you, I bet you I bought 50 chargers. Um, wait, you're saying, Bishop, why in the world would you buy so many chargers? I buy so many chargers because I can't be without my phone. And sometimes I spend $20 to get a charge. Now, here's my point. Can you imagine what would happen in this church and in your life if you would become that intentional about plugging into the port of the Holy Ghost? Hey. You know, you better hear my, your bishop today. I will spend money. Intentional. Um, the first thing now that goes in our suitcase when we're getting ready to leave is not prayer. It's the charger. The church needs to come back to intentionally seeking the face of God. Your oil is low. Unless you plug in and charge up with the Holy Ghost. Hey. 
Walmart stocks went up because I bought so many chargers. <laughs> Let me tell you this, young people, this is for you. Listen to me carefully, young people. Every failure in my life can be traced back to a place of prayerlessness. Regardless of what the failure is, if you're going to chart the course to the next level, you must pray. Prayer lifts you to the place in the spirit where the enemy can't gain access to you. Prayer makes you undetectable to the forces of hell. The greatest downfall of every great man or woman of God can be traced directly back to the place where a prayer warrior, an intercessor, stopped praying. In our very own city, one of my very good friends over the last few years went through an absolute catastrophe. And when I was praying about it, the Lord said, the reason why is because the intercessors around him stop covering him. Hey, that's pressure on the intercessors. Good, you take it. Sister Edwina, you take it. I don't care if you're sick, lame, or lazy. Pray! If you can't make it to church, pray. Pray. Do you hear me? If you want to see your family saved, pray. If you need them delivered, pray. The whole church needs, I'm not, I'm not angry, by the way. <laughs> some, of you, some of you think, man, this, this guy's really hanging or angry. He's mad. Woo, Jesus. <laughs> you know what the Lord showed me? Come here, Pastor Figgins. You can, no, come on the stage so that way people can see it. I, I'll show you a graphic image. I'm looking for a chair. No chair? Give me a chair. <laughs> Come here, Pastor Fagans, I'll use you. Sit on the chair. I saw this. The Lord says, no, Pastor Fagans, oh, man, I don't have a bucket of water. <laughs> I'm, oh, I'm, I'm, no, no that, that's, he can't put his head in there. No, I'm not kidding. Can somebody grab me a bucket? One big enough that fits it. it. <laughs> you you want a drink? I have a drink. I have a drink while I'm waiting for a bucket. Look at someone and say, pray. pray. I'm going to show you something. It's going to be graphic. And you're, 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 hurry up with the bucket. It's got to be, it could be a wash bucket. We don't care. We don't care. Hurry, says the Gladhead, if you're getting it. My gosh. Pray. Teach us, God, how to pray. Make me desperate, God, for prayer. Jesus, I'm trying to, I'm trying to not waste our time. That will tell you that, obviously, this is not in my notes. This I'm prepared, right? But I, I'll wait. There's a bucket big enough somewhere in this church that I can show you this principle because God wants to make you understand the power of prayer. Jesus. Yes, that's just, just that, that is absolutely fine. Thank you. Bring your chair over. <laughs> this is what the Lord showed me. He said, I, I don't know if he told me to tell you or not, but I'm there. He said, this is the way that people need to see prayer like this. There's water in this. Come here, Pastor Fagans. Put your head all the way down. There, there you go. That's good like this. Now. 
Wait. Uh, go all the way down. Go on. <laughs> listen, listen, I'm not trying to be humorous. No, no. keep your head down. <laughs> Let me ask you this question. How long could he stay underneath that water? Not long? How long do you think? How long do you think you could stay underneath that? A few seconds? <laughs> How long do you think? No, watch this. Lift up. Oh, give me a high five, dude. This is working out too well. This is working out too well. Did you hear him go... What was he doing? <laughs> he was taking a breath. What? Do you breathe like that all the time? <gasps> no. He went, <gasps> because his oxygen was being cut off. And if I put more pressure, I could keep him there a little longer. And I probably could keep him there till he started to get to a place where he was so desperate for hair that he would punch me. <laughs> Mike, Mike is back there. <laughs> right? He would be willing to fight his bishop who he loves. And the Lord said this. I want my people to be so desperate for my heart like they, they are, like Pastor Figgins is <clears throat> gasping for hair. I'm not prophesying, but chances are there's nobody, not even including sanctified Pastor Brown, is so desperate for prayer and for a move of God like Pastor Fagan's was. <gasps> the church needs to become that hungry for a move of the Holy Spirit. Are you satisfied? To live your life beneath what God said you can have and live? Are you willing to live without oxygen? Prayer changes everything. If a man or woman their prayer life declines. It is a sign that you've been infected with a backslider virus. You want to go home? Oh, you can leave it. Can I just give you one more then? Because I have seven. Can I give you the third one? I don't mind Rico saying that. If he wants to go home, he can go home. A backslider virus might have infected you if you're number three. Number three. Oh, man, this one's going to be good. If you lost interest in the church. Oh, you didn't hear what I said. I see you might be infected... With the backsliders virus, if you lost interest in the church, I'm going to prove it to you from the word. I want you to know that I grew up in church, as most of you know. And I'll be the first to tell you that church can be extremely boring. 
Thank you for not saying amen. The church can be a place of pain. It can be a place of tremendous, tremendous trauma. But the church can also be a place of tremendous blessing. Everything and everyone that's been a blessing in my life has came as a result of church. Watch this. I got born again in church. I got educated in church. Got baptized in water in church. Got baptized with Holy Ghost fire with the evidence of speaking in tongues in church. God blessed me financially through my church. I'm telling you, church, my, my friendship, my, my first job came as a result of being in church. I signed my first contract with Bell Canada at age 13 to cut, uh, to cut power li- or the lines for telephones through, through the woods. I was 13. I think my dad probably lied and said I was 14. I think you had to be 14. First contract. In my own name. Do you know why? Hey. Met my one and only lady. Right there. Through and in church. So, so don't tell me. The church is not useful. Church. Church. Do you know how many anointed, boring sermons that I have preached and heard in church? Do you know that the church was never meant to be a place of perfection? In fact, let me even tell you this. The church will never be perfect until the perfecter who is Christ comes to perfect it. Do you know that an imperfect church is not a biblical excuse for not attending church? Do you know that somebody hurt me in the church is not a reasonable excuse for avoiding church? Oh, you're getting, you want me to go back to prayer because do you know that the church is filled with hypocrites? <laughs> Let's just help the world out. The, the church is filled with hypocrites. Of course there's hypocrites. But do you know church filled with hypocrites is not a biblical reason for not going to church? Family, if I were to ask you this question, I wonder how you would answer it. Can you tell me, I'm going to risk, can you tell me, according to the scripture, what Christ died for? That's right. Thank you. Thank you. It's correct. The Bible says that Christ died for sinners. He died for sinner, which I was one. But now I'm born again. No, no, you didn't get it. I was a sinner. But now I am born again. And I am saved. So, so watch this. <laughs> this is going to, uh, I risk it, Lord. You brought me this far. I was a sinner. And by grace, I'm saved. But I am no longer a sinner saved by grace. Oh, look at your religious faces. Why? The Bible says no sinner shall enter heaven. Does it say that? Am I lying to you? I was a sinner and I was saved by grace. But I'm no longer a sinner saved by grace because I'm saved. 
I was a sinner. But now I'm saved. And the Bible says no sinner is going to go to heaven. So I can't say I'm a sinner. Saved by grace. Now I'm saved. We need to understand what it means, church. I'm saved. So I'm not, I'm not a sinner. I was a sinner. And I'm saved by grace. But I'm no longer a sinner saved by grace because I'm a, I'm a saved saint. It's a play on words, but you got to be careful because you might be speaking something over your life that's not true. I was a sinner, but I'm saved by the grace of God. I am not perfected. I'm going on to perfection, but I'm saved. And guess what? I sin. Hey, did you hear me? I sin, but I am not I'm not practice. I'm not living, and that's another point. I'm not living in sin. Yes, I sin. And I go to Jesus and I ask because I have an advocate to the Father, which is Christ. So now watch this church. I I, I was a sinner, but now I'm saved. Somebody said, hey, Bishop, do you believe once saved, always saved? I said, yes. And and they did what some of you are going. No, I'm not Baptist. I'm Pentecostal. But I do believe it's saved. Once saved, always saved. This is how I believe it. Get saved, stay saved. I don't believe. I don't believe that you can get saved and live any way you want and be saved. But I'm saying I believe once saved, get saved. And no matter what the hell comes your way, no matter how many demons you got to fight, you stand. When you've done all to stand, stand. When they criticize your name and when they rake you over the coals and when they say that you're a hypocrite, say, yes, but I'm saved. Show me somebody who is not. Ephesians 5, verse 25b says this. Just as Christ loved the church, Hey, wait, I'm not going to finish this message, but I got to move on. Next week is rise. Just as Christ, just as Christ, what? What did he love? What? Did it say just as Christ loved the sinner? No, the church. What, what's the next verse, the next part? He gave up his, for who? Am am I I lying? Prophet Michael, am I lying? Just as Christ loved the church, he gave up. So Christ didn't just die for sinners. Here he gave up his life for you. You're the church. Not these walls. He couldn't care less about these walls. The only thing that makes this holy is you being here dancing. Without your presence, this is just a building. It's just brick and mortar. What makes this holy place is that the people of God gather here as a spiritual family to call. Ah, Jesus, help me. To call upon the name of Jesus. I'm telling you, this is what lifts a man or a woman out of the muck and mire. This is what promotes us. This is what gives us success. You want success in life? Get into a place where Jesus comes in and begins to lift you. I prophesy in the mighty name of Jesus, somebody in this house will be lifted to a place that will blow your mind this week. (laughs) Hebrews 10, 25. Oh my. Let me finish this one, please. Please. (sighs) Can, can Can you help me read it? While I catch my breath, let us not wait, don't go so fast. Let us not neglect what? <laughs> COVID. Thank God for online. Let us not neglect 
our church meeting as but and who each other especially who you might be infected with the backsliders virus when you don't have a desire to be in the presence of God with brothers and sisters. <sighs> the Bible says this, iron sharpens iron. Do you know that regular church attendance sharpens your faith? Strengthens your resolve, encourages your heart. Do you know? Do you know we got we have a big problem. We have. You guys are making me work hard. Do you, we have a big problem, Resurrection Center? Do you know what the problem is? It's a massive problem. We've discussed it as elders, and we're not sure how to fix it. Here's the problem. After prayer meetings and after a Sunday morning gathering, many of you don't want to go home. No, 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 you think I'm kidding. We, we've discussed this in elder meeting. How? How are we going to get the people? To go home. Hmm. Now my response is this. Do you know how hard we work to get you here? We work so hard to get you here. When we get you here, the last thing your bishop wants is to tell you to leave. But it's this big problem. You can tell that after I get you here, I don't want you to leave either, right? <laughs> and the reason why people don't want to leave is this. It's because of the glory. I'm going to, I'm going to clarify. It's because of the glory of God that resides on the life of men and women. Amen. Nobody wants to spend time with people who are grumpy and miserable. I invited somebody for breakfast yesterday morning, and they declined because they were busy. They didn't decline because they said, you're too miserable to have breakfast with. They declined because they were busy. When you have something on your life, people want to be around you. And if you can't find a friend at the resurrection center, and hey, I just felt the Holy Ghost. I prophesy, if you can't find, I don't know where to look now. I'll look up here. If you can't find a husband and a wife at the resurrection center, maybe you're the problem. <laughs> come on, I praise him. Worship me. Hey, come on. Let me tell you something, church. <laughs> I was talking, I don't know who, maybe it was Pastor Figgins, I don't remember who it was, I th and we were talking, and like, at one time you could say, there's no young men at the resurrection center. Well, liar, liar. <laughs> Let some, I thank you, whoever said that, lots of them. Lots of them. Mm -mm -mm. People don't want to leave church when you carry the presence of God and when you're fun to be around. People don't want to leave your presence. I've released the grace of visibility upon this church. People need to find us. I don't know why they can't find us, 
but people need to find us in the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever is causing people, hey, oh, whatever is causing people, do, do you know, do you know there's somebody right now that's dying with cancer that you were supposed to heal, but the enemy has blinded them to make sure that you never meet them. You are somebody's answer. Somebody right now, secretly, has, they don't even know what they're doing, but they're asking, if you're up there, God, send me somebody. But in the name of Jesus, may God lift you to a place of visibility in the name of Jesus. And you will not shame the gospel of Jesus Christ, but you will pray and you will believe and you will tell them if you're hurting, if you're broken, if you don't know what to do, if you need somebody to love you, I know a place. I know a place. Thank you. Thank you, David. How can you say you love God, but don't love being around God's people? Can I ask you another question? How well do you think things would go for a man who told his wife, hey, babe, I love you, but I don't want to spend time with you. I'm, ladies, help me. How, how would you feel if your husband this afternoon says, babe, babe, I love you, but you know what? I don't want to be around you. I'm, I'm coming. I try to hurry. How well would it go for you if you criticize my wife in front of me? If you start criticizing her in front of me and I stand there and remain silent, oh, no, 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 I'm teaching. You can, you can dismiss you can be dismissed. Let me come down so I can see your face. How well? Pastor Fagans, Claudina, I would use Juan and Claudina, but she's at work, so you're the only couple. Stand up. How, you too. How well? No, I'm not going to use me. Come here, Malachi. How well will it go for Malachi? Come on out, step out, don't be shy. If, if Malachi starts to curse off your wife, <laughs> no, 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 I, no, I, I know you, I'm, don't worry, I'm not going to ask you to do it. How well, ladies and gentlemen, will it go for Malachi? If, wait, wait, if he says, if he says, uh, fi, uh, no, you won't call him pastor. Figgins, you know your wife? She's a hypocrite. Do you know, Pastor Fagans, she's a two-timing witch. <laughs> Look at your faces. How well? <laughs> Mike says five-fold ministry. I don't know if the cameras can pick that up. Mike says five-fold ministry. How well? Imagine if he says, you know what? Her whole family is messed up. Let me tell you something about your wife, Pastor Figgins. Your wife. Hey. She is a two-timing, cheating hypocrite. She's a liar. And a thief. Jesus said, my house shall be called what? But you have made it what? So that means there's only two things in the church. That's right, Kimlin. High five. Praying people or thieves. So my question is, which are you?
Now, I'm going somewhere. So imagine now, in the presence of Figgins, this young man slaughters his wife. And Pastor Figgins, excuse me, okay, just play with me, all right? Do this. Just hangs his head and remains silent. Now, now, you go sit down. You guys sit down. Now, when you go back home <laughs> and you sit across the table from each other, hey, I, 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 you know, I don't play the part of a woman very well, but I got a feeling. He wouldn't even get to the table. No table. They're saying the women are saying no table. You'd be cut off for six months at least. No table. Now, let me ask you this question. You're laughing. You're having a good time. You're laughing at Fagans. Thinking about Rashida giving him licks. <laughs> but yet, you can hear Kevin and me cut up the bride of Christ. I mean, slice and dice. I mean, cut. You know, you're right, sister. I don't know why they all act like that. Don't you know that's a spirit? I mean, a demon spirit. Don't, don't, you, don't, don't, don't you know? Don't, don't you know that when people get online and cut up preachers like T.D. Jakes, that you're buying into a spirit. I got to say this again. When preachers, when somebody's cutting up the church, you should say to them what you would say to them about your wife. Excuse me. That's my wife. Now let me, ask, let me put it in the, in the picture for you. I showed you in the text. Jesus loved the church and gave gave his whole life for the church and you and I guilty too, guilty too you and I will sit and tolerate people cut up the bride of Christ and remain silent the next time you see somebody cutting up the church on Facebook you should say something and if you're doing it shame on you Hey, I'm just, I'm all the way out. The limb, the limb is breaking. Shame on you. And there's a lot of nasty things that can be said about the church. But why you only focus on what the church don't do? On what the church is not? Rather than say what the church is. Where did you get saved? 20 years ago, you got saved. Where did you get saved? Grand Boulevard Church. Grand Boulevard Church. Where did you get saved? At church. Brother Juan, how about you? Did you get saved in church? You got saved in church. How about you? You get saved because it's okay to get saved at home. It's possible. You got saved in church. Grand Boulevard, yes. You? Church. church. Babe, did you get saved in church? I know you were born saved, but. West End Revival. West End Revival. How about you, Pastor Brown? Church. Church! How long have you been saved? Oh my goodness. Over 70 years. Over 70 years saved, born again. 70 years in the church. <laughs> 70 years. Church, 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 church. Do you know what that makes, that makes us, babe? It makes us Jesus' bride. Stand up again. Stand up again. Turn around this way. Some people can see you. Jesus, bride. (laughs) 
Jesus bride. Wait, I never told you to sit down. The same way that he would not tolerate being in the presence of somebody that was cutting up his wife. This, let me, oh, thank you, Jesus. I just heard the Lord say, tell, tell them. This is part of the reason why there's empty chairs, ladies and gentlemen, this morning. There's empty chairs in this church today. Because even the church, even the bride, has stopped believing in the bridegroom. If we actually believed what we say we believe, if, you, if we actually believed that healing was in this house, that deliverance was in this house, that there's friendships in this house, that you can find peace in this house, that you can be blessed with prosperity in this house. If we actually believe that, do you think we had to beg people to fill that seat and that seat? Not a chance. But because we, we, this time fake, and this is not you, so don't beat me up, okay? Because just the illustration. The bride is so misrepresenting the Jesus that the bride is not attractive. The bride Everything that's on him is supposed to be on her. And everything that's on her is supposed to be flowing to the people. But if you don't believe in yourself, if you don't believe in him, it was the Christ, how can it flow to you? And if you don't believe in the body of the church, the church, church, Saved church, saved in church, saved in church, saved in church, saved in church. And let me illustrate just for those that are skeptics. God can call you anywhere at any time and anyone can get born again anywhere. All it means is a prayer by faith. But the church is the tool in which Christ died for so that the church could be a light that sits on a hill that gives light to the whole city. So look at your neighbor and ask them this. How bright is your light? Hey. Now you can stand. You can stand because of... When will you begin to pray a prayer of desperation? When will you start speaking about the church, the bride of Christ, the way that Christ sees us? Every hand lifted. Let's just worship him just for a moment. Hey. Oh, God. Hey. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Lord, right now, I ask for forgiveness for not defending what you died for. Help me, God, to become a better defender of the faith. In the mighty name of Jesus. You know what I saw in the word? The scripture says, in several places, not just one place, it says, and I think it's, it's quoting, if I'm misquoting, forgive me, it says something like this. As it was his custom, he went into the synagogue. 
referring to Jesus. Am I misquoting that? It says something like that, right? And not just one place. Now, let me ask you this. What was the synagogue that he went into? It was the church. It was the church, Jody. He went as it was his custom. He went into the synagogue. And in one place it talks about it was delivered unto him a book. Remember? The book of Isaiah. 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 And, and he started to read the book. Now, just because I don't have time to actually break this open, watch this. Jesus himself. Who was Jesus? God in the flesh, right? Jesus went to church. The next time, the next time you hear people cutting up the church, let me ask you this question. Was the church that Jesus attended perfect? It wasn't perfect. It, in fact, it was a mess. Remember, he kicked them, kicked them out and all of that stuff? As it was his custom, he went into the synagogue. Now watch this. How could us... As human beings not need the church when God in the flesh went to church as it was his custom as it was his custom so watch this I approve it from the word Jesus went to church <laughs> and he read the Bible Isaiah delivered unto him the book of Isaiah and he read it and the scripture says he closed the book and he sat down and he said to all the people in attendance today this scripture is fulfilled today Jesus for all the church hating people Jesus went to church he read the Bible, the Old Testament too. He read the Bible. He prayed. He fasted. But you and I, we are so mighty and powerful that we don't need the thing that Jesus needed. And for all the people that would say, yeah, of course, but it's all about money. Hey, do you remember why Jesus rebuked them? on the steps of the temple because it was all about money. The church is over 2,000. By the way, the year 2030, 2030, today is 2024, right? In six years, 2030, the church is 2,000 years old in 2030. The body of Christ, if we're still here, we need to get ready for the biggest celebration that the world has ever experienced in 2020. We need to celebrate the birthing of the church. 2030. Write it down, Pastor Brown. Write it down. We need to do this. Now let me, oh boy, I, yeah, it hurts, I know. I'm, I'm, I apologize for keeping you so long. But I still have four points. But if you're in this house and you've spoken negatively against the bride of Christ because you've been hurt, I apologize that you've been hurt. Some people unfortunately go through a divorce in their life. And going through a divorce is a terrible, terrible thing to go through. But even after going through a divorce, does it mean that you can't love again? doesn't mean that you can't receive love. Because you went through a divorce and your whole life was a catastrophe, doesn't mean that marriage is no good. 
And in the same way, because you went through hell in a church, and because you might go through hell somewhere else in some other church, doesn't mean that church is no good. Jesus went to church, prayed for the church, believed in the church, and watch this, died for the church. So, I'm going to let you go home. Father, in the name of Christ, forgive us as the church for not appreciating the thing that you died for. Could I just say one other thing? I'm not praying now. Look at me for a sec. Because I sense, I sense there's a lot of criticism. I believe a lot of people criticize us, even a lot of us here at RC. I'm not talking about just the pastor. I'm talking about us as a church. They criticize the Resurrection Center and they say, oh, they think they're better than other people. I wanted to make this, I want to go on the record as saying this. This church is not better than any other church. But my goal as the lead pastor of this church is to be the best church that I can be. I'm not, the, my aim is not to be a better church than anybody else. But my aim is to become the best church that we can become. The best, do you hear me? I'm not in competition with anyone. I'm just saying, I'm trying to get us to a place where we become the best church that we can become. Not better than anybody else, but I need to be the best. Because when I stand before God one day, I need to be able to present to God and say, God, I did my best. Now my question to you is this, as I don't even do an altar call, my question to you is this, are you doing your best to be part of and representing the bride of Christ. Holy Spirit, let me finish my prayer. Father, forgive us. Forgive us. Next Sunday, Holy Ghost, we need a visitation in this church. God, I believe that people are going to come from all over next week. It's Easter. People are going to want to be in the house of God. But Lord, we don't want to give them a dead, cold, dry religion. We don't want to give them just a bunch of hypocrites. But, Lord, we want to represent you. Help us to represent you well. And I ask today in the mighty name of Jesus, God, that every person that needs forgiveness, everyone that needs grace, God, because we've said things, been in the presence of other people, and remain silent, I pray that you will forgive us. Now, God, I want you to, re I want you to receive this with me. Okay, church? Holy Spirit. Help me to fall in love with the church again. Young people, we got to love the church. We got to love the church. We got to love the church. And loving the church means we got to love broken people. We got to love hurting people. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, I'm trying to let you go. Holy Ghost, I release a special grace right now. Hey, I wish I could lay hands on every one of you. In the mighty name of Jesus, I release grace. I release grace upon your head right now to bring healing to a broken church. To bring healing to a broken people. Every person under the sound of my voice that you were hurt in church, I release your pain now in the name of Jesus. I release your pain now in the name of Jesus. 
you tormenting spirit that tries to keep this, the, the church, the anointed chosen bride of Christ down. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Come out! Receive healing now. Receive healing now in the name of Jesus. Receive healing now. Receive healing now in the name of Jesus. If you feel like somebody robbed you in church, receive healing now. Receive healing in what was stolen from you. Give it to Jesus. Give it to Jesus. You're the church. I hear the Lord saying, put on your wedding garment Put on your wedding garment. Clothe yourself. Repent. Come back to your first love. Put on your wedding garment. Put on your wedding garment and come back to me. I will heal you. And I will cause you to become a sign and a wonder. I have put healing. I have put my anointing. I have put my blood upon your head. Receive it now and go and release people from their pain, from their disappointment, from their hurt. How long will you mourn? How long will you cry? Somebody is waiting on you. Let the church arise. Let the church arise. Let the church arise. Let the church arise. Let the anointed bride of Christ arise. In the mighty name of Jesus. Do you guys have a song ready? You can sing. You can be dismissed. Sing, Rayandre. Kutora Mande. Sing it, Rayandre. A house of prayer. Lord, make me a house. Make me a house, God. Make me a house of prayer. A house of prayer. Sing worship team. Worship That's right, let the fire, let the fire never burn out. 